I came from, I'm originally from Belgium, I came to New York in 1980, and in 1982 I started sort of officially in the art world, where I was the director of um, a gallery called Olsen Gallery. At Olsen Gallery, I actually was introduced to Clarissa Dalrymple by the artist Sarah Charlesworth, and we both together opened Cable Gallery in um, 1984. Uh, which was um, a very diff obviously a very different time than than uh, today, which where there was a real community and you were very close. There was much more connection with the artist, etc. In '89, I opened my gallery, my own gallery, because Cable Gallery closed. We lost our artists, and we were not very experienced, and we were not funded. Um, that time, the relationship with artists was more balanced, where there was a sort of um, reciprocity, whereas now you have to really perform for the artist because of what's happened, what's happened to the uh, to the market. Um, I enjoyed the process of working with the artists, like going to the studio, creating the first show, nurturing them to, to have a career. Now this all takes place in three months. I mean, you know, from the studio to the first show to sort of an auction house sale. So, and the other, so I like being a facilitator, somebody in between. And the way that the art world works now is much more alienating. I mean, it's obviously, you know, everybody knows how corporate it is and how many people work in galleries and all the art fairs and all of this. Um, so the focus is much more about the result rather than really living through some, you know, living through a, pro a creative process. This is Green Street, Jimmy Durham. Also, this was sort of a 20th century model. I mean, it's not a criticism, but it's just that now is, it's completely different. But the way that, the way that it evolved, um, the fact that it was so much more about, it became about the product. The public became much more interested in, 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 in the resale and the value of the the monetary value of art, that, um, that became very stifling. Then I moved to Chelsea in, when was that, I think in 89? No, in uh, 98. And mm. that's Rashid Johnson, that's another show. So the art world from being much more of a community and a sort of people in the trade became part of sort of the global, I mean it, it functions much more like the global, the rest of the economy kind of global. And um, for me that was not, that was not on a daily basis, it was something that was very stressful and not pleasurable. And I also felt that the, the rules of it and the way that it functioned wasn't negotiable. I mean, you had to really be in the art fairs. You had to have a schedule of show. You had to you know, really be part of it. And um, that got very uh, sort of blinding. So the... Also, the, the, the problems of the, you know, participating in an art fair was uh, an, another very difficult, a, a very difficult part. And the public now wants to buy sort of en masse. I mean, they want to be, they don't want to be confronted, they seem like they don't want to be confronted with the actual person and, you know, sort of a one-to-one -one situation. I think probably the internet and all of that has, is, is, a big, is playing a big factor. And also, if you go to an art fair, the, the artwork is seen by, I don't know, 
how many, 60,000 people versus in a gallery the number of people passing by is much less. So I think that's another thing that the artists, um, the reason why the artists want so much to be in art fairs. I did at one point, which was a few years before I closed, I took a smaller space on the ground floor, on the ground floor on 24th Street, because I was trying to change the way of functioning. So this, I took that as a project space, and I decreased the number of artists that I was representing. But I didn't feel that that, that solved the problem of that machine that I constantly feel that I have to feed and, and uh, follow. So, um, I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I knew that this, the, that I didn't want to continue in the system, and the only way of not being part of the system was to get out of it. So I closed in 2013. Before I closed, I was starting to work with an artist called Brie Rouet, and I did propose to her, because I thought it was a pity not to give her her first one-person show, so I asked her if she agreed to, um, to do this with me as an independent if I rented a space, and she agreed to do that. So that was basically my first venture as an independent. And the show was very successful, and we still continue to work together, so I still represent her. This is a show where we collaborate with the Mesne Foyer in the Lower East Side. And she currently has some new work at uh, Rachel Hoffner Gallery in the Lower East Side. Then I met, somebody introduced me to Lee Kinones in 2015. And um, within six months, I found a space on the Lower East Side and showed um, drawings from the 70s and 80s. So that was, the, I guess, the second, the second pop-up. Then Jeffrey Deitch, um, when he came back to New York and reopened his gallery, he opened with um, a show of Cameron, of drawings and paintings by Cameron, which was shown in LA at MoCA. And I've been representing the estate since 2006, and I continue to represent the estate. Then I... Um, I now work out of an office-showroom in Chelsea, in the same building that I used to have my gallery, funnily enough. And there I did a show of watercolors by Peter Schoff. And that's the office. I do find it, again, quite a, a time that's quite exciting because it's, um, I didn't, I felt there was no place to grow anymore. I mean, you had to be sort of, you know, the mid-sized gallery is kind of disappearing, which is, you know, what I was. So in this kind of, you know, sort of vast new horizon, I feel again, you know, excitement, a place to grow, and I think a lot of, you know, some opportunities. Like, um, I mean, I do represent a young artist. I work with a mid-career artist, Lee Kinones. And I can, there's a lot of artists that don't have galleries, that have a career, and so there's opportunities there to sort of intervene. And I am back to a sort of flexibility, a sort of pace that I dictate, which I enjoy. And um, to sort of have, you know, to reflect, to have relationships with people. Mm -hmm and not to necessarily be uh, you know exclusively a conduit for uh, for the art market